Hello, welcome back. I'm Allison Kinnear. Today we are talking about imposter syndrome. We are going to continue this conversation from last week. If you have not seen last week's video, make sure you take a look because we are talking about the seven good reasons to feel like an imposter. This is the work outlined in Valerie Young's amazing book, The Secret Thoughts of Successful Women. And Today, we're going to break down the final three things. And the reason why I separated these, these uh, out today is because these are some conditions that are really outside of one's control. They are really conditions that are a part of the company culture, of our greater society. These are things that are deeply embedded in our society that are impacting women every single day, not just women. People. So let's get into it. Um, and once again, Secret Thoughts of Successful Women, I cannot recommend it more. So this is the fifth reason, perfectly good reason to feel like an imposter. Number five, you work in an organizational culture that feeds self-doubt. Is it safe to ask questions? Is it safe to not know? Is it safe to make mistakes? Is it okay to fail forward? Is there a culture of learning and growth and development? Or is there a culture of punishment and assumptions and blame? Are people in your company, if you work in a company where there is a tendency to throw people under the bus, people are not going to operate at their best. They will, maybe, for a short term because they're desperate enough, but they are not going to work at their optimal best. They're going to be racked with self-doubt. And we'll talk later on if that actually matters. They're going to lead to burnout. Having to navigate a culture where it feels deeply unsafe to ask questions, to make mistakes, then you can become overwhelmed with the sense that you don't know what you're doing. You can feel isolated, even if you're working in partnership with other people. We don't operate as our best when we have a target on our back. So if you're feeling some extra imposter syndrome and you know you work for a company culture that feeds self-doubt, that likes to keep everyone on their toes, then just know that it may not be you. It may be a reflection of the company culture. Number six, you are a stranger in a strange land. There is a great statistic, 86% of foreign-born medical professionals who were working in Canada, almost 86% reported feeling feelings of like being an imposter, feeling like a fraud. 86%. If you grew up in one culture and then work in another culture, you're going to be constantly feeling like you don't belong. And that sense of belonging goes a long way to feeling confident in yourself. Okay. Feeling like you can trust yourself, that you know what you're doing because you have a lay of the land. You have a read on that. I know I experienced a ton of imposter syndrome when I first started working at Google because I was the first person to go to college in my family. And suddenly I'm working with people whose grandparents were doctors and, you know, they came from these prestigious colleges and universities. And I was wondering, how did this bowling alley kid make it to make it to Google? It can. And there are these unwritten rules. There are these unwritten things that you don't exactly know about. You're not exactly aware of. I remember um, when I earned a scholarship um, to go to college, just a small scholarship. I didn't know it was expected of me to make a speech. No one in my family knew I was supposed to make a speech. So I just stood there. I said, thank you. And I left. I had no idea that there was an expectation that I was supposed to come prepared with something. We did not know what we did not know because we were strangers in a strange land. And if you are a woman working in any kind of corporation, let me tell you, this is one of the reasons why women who work for corporations or in the field of higher education, why they are so commonly racked with imposter syndrome. I believe it's, it's 70%, between 70 and 80%. The reason why is because these institutions were made by men 
for men. And not just men, white men. They were made by white men for white men. So there is a constant trying to navigate this world that doesn't see women, that doesn't think about them until an afterthought. And there's these levels of these ways of, of moving up in leadership that are, uh, there's many books written for women in leadership to help them navigate all that is unseen. And I would argue that it is even worse for women of color because, or any person of color, because they are not only trying to do what they're trying to do in their work, but they're also trying to have to navigate this white world that they work in. All right. And that leads me to number seven. You represent your entire social group. This is why representation matters. If you don't know what is possible, if you are the only woman in the room, if you are the only person of color in the room, if you are the only working class, poor, you know, socioeconomic roots person in the room, you're going to wonder how did you get there? If you belong there, you are going to be noticed more. And so the, the spotlight of attention will be stronger. People will notice your uh, successes. They will also notice your failures they will notice your mistakes while everybody else can make mistakes and nobody really pays attention. So if you are representing your entire social group in situations, then you can begin to doubt yourself. You can doubt yourself not only around, um, this is when imposter syndrome can get really crippling because you feel like you can't actually move. You can't actually move forward because what if you make a mistake? What does that mean for you? What does that mean in other people's perceptions of your entire social group? Um, so this is where, this is where we need to do better. This is, and you can also get into your head. Was I hired? because I'm brown? Was I hired because I'm a woman? Was I hired because I'm black? You can start to, it can start to feed into those insecurities as well from, from that point of view. This is why we need to build more inclusive practices. And if people think, oh, we've, we've done a lot, we've come a long way from before, but I'll tell you, as of just a couple of years ago, I remember moving to a, um, I was a childcare director. I moved to a center and there was one person of color that worked there at the time that I was hired, one out of 20 people. And the applicant pool, the people applying for the jobs, I would say at least 80, 85% were, were people of color. So tell me, how does 99% of a staff, are they white when the applicant pool is, you know, 80% not white? These are the blind spots that happen. So as a leader in your company, whether that means you're in an actual position of power, of leadership, of cultural company, cultural influence, or if you are just a leader in your group, you're somebody who steps into leadership roles, this is where we need to listen to the people who do not look like us. If you're a man, please listen to the women. If you are white, please listen to the people of color and believe them because there are serious consequences when our when our society is blind to this. Okay, those are seven good reasons to feel like an imposter. Today, what I want you to walk away with, as with the other things, these are conditions that it doesn't mean you're always going to be racked with imposter syndrome, but it does mean that these are conditions that can feed it. These are conditions that can create a situation where you might be in self-doubt. And so we have to become aware. Is it messages from childhood? Am I working in isolation? Is this a creative field? Am I learning something? What's my work culture like? Am I coming at this from uh, feeling like a stranger in a strange land? Am I representing my entire social group? If so, this is good awareness to, to have. It's like when you can have that awareness, then when you can see it coming in, you go, ah, wait, hold on a sec. Is this me? Oftentimes people who suffer from imposter syndrome, they're always thinking it must be me. 
It must be something I'm doing. There must be something wrong with me. But these seven good reasons to feel like an imposter, what I hope is that you can then see, ah, maybe there's something in me that can shift, that can change, where I can step into my confidence, I can step into my power a little bit more. But maybe these are also conditions that create an environment in which those nerves are going to be touched and activated more. Next week, we are going to talk about, does any of this matter? Who cares if people have imposter syndrome? Who cares if they're suffering with self-doubt and confidence? Does it actually matter? And the answer is yes, absolutely. So next week, we will talk about why it matters. I wish you a wonderful week, and I will see you next week. Bye.